second legal dispensary and what makes this one unique is that the applicant was impacted by the war on drugs. He's a social equity applicant that was incarcerated for possession of cannabis. Everybody here this morning, it's a wonderful day. Again, my name is Ruben McDaniel, President CEO of DASD, board member of the Office of Cannabis Management. Uh, you know, this has been a long journey for all of us. Uh, this is the first social equity applicant to open up a legal dispensary in New York City. New York is really doing something amazing at this point to really take away that stigma and realize that, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a person at the end of the day. And we have people at the end of the day. And those, those and like if I, if I was sitting on the bus, I'm a passenger. But when I get up that bus, I'm a citizen. And so I went through a situation where you know, when I was in jail, I became a convict. But when I came home, I'm no longer that. And so I don't even like, the, I, I really don't like the press using that as a term. I, I went through that and I served my time. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm here now. So I just, um, I'm just happy to be here. And I think everybody deserves a chance. You do your time, you come home, and you should be able to get a job. And, and they should not hold that against you because that's one of the biggest things that um, they have to fix. My opinion on the unlicensed operators, um, listen, I come from that. And so my opinion is that at the end of the day that they should be supported, they should not be stamped out, and they should give them the opportunity to make the transition from legal to legal. They should, they should be helped in doing that. Chris, can, can you give uh, Green Marker Report an update on how the fund is going and uh, just give us more of a current status? Well, the fund is going well. We're actually at the uh, first individually owned and operated store by a social equity applicant. Um, Roland has done a great job and we're excited about um, not only his dispensary and his business but also his empathy and how it'll transcend the walls of his dispensary and uh, affect his community. So that's the status of the fund right now. Today we're opening up the first social equity dispensary in the state of New York and I think that's a pretty big update. Have you guys been getting the buy-in you expected from the private sector for the money? Well you should speak to the fundraisers about that and today we're here to celebrate great Roland opening up his first social equity dispensary and that's pretty much the conversation of today. So I know him very well though I've never met him because I know a lot of my friends and family that haven't had access or it's been unfairly targeted by the crimes of marijuana that maybe some people are capitalizing on it now. So it's a familiarity with all of us no matter where you're from and that's why I'm so proud that he stayed patient, he persevered, he worked hard and now he has an opportunity with this dispensary. Thank you. What we decided to do is, with the assessments and stuff we've been doing, the properties takes time getting the plans done. So the thought process was, let's do a pop-up, get sales going, because that also acclimates Roland and his team how to run a store, you know, because there's a lot of pressure. So once we get that, you know, going, then they could actually start uh, tear it down, grow open a permanent store, but it actually gets them exposed to the elements of how to run a store and the SOPs, setting up the SOPs. And at, at the end of the day, is there's not a playbook for this you know in other states when they've done social equity and stuff they've given a piece of paper but there's no money behind it so a lot of these pieces of paper just sit around and do anything for what the state's doing this is a big lift and I applaud them in other states you know they just kind of hand out paper and there's no success to what that what's happening so what's doing there's no playbook to do this and it's it, it's a it's a big lift but you see what's happening and they're doing a really good job at what they're doing do the temporary setups meet the rules and regs or I mean are they even really in place Yes, so what we do is in some times where you would have a card access to get in between rooms, we have an armed guard at those locations. I'm Deborah Borchart reporting for the Green Marker Report from Smack Village in New York City.